Good Thursday morning of the 16th week. It's the same theme, okay? He's just running it out to chapter 13, okay? I'll read it to you, but it's the Isaiah prophecy that's the key to this thing. And I think he's describing in our times in many ways. I'm not, I hope I don't come across as critical of our times. I think we live in the greatest age of the church since the fourth century. I really do. Because it, as it collapses, as it were, culturally, it's revitalized spiritually, morally. <laughs> you can put your money where your mouth is, and you have to have the will to pursue Christ, you see? There's no rolling along to, I think, uh, no waltzing to the light, fantastic. There is none. There is, you can't waltz along now. You've got to choose. And you have, a, have to have a heart open to choosing. And you have to have a, a heart open to seeing. My friend Sarah, her grandmother, what a brilliant woman. And great insights, and it applies right here. In fact, it's in the New Testament, in the Gospel right here. When she said, before you can love Sarah, you must first see her. But you have to see her. If you want, before you can love Christ, you have to see Christ. But to see Christ, you have to have a heart open to it, to seeing him. You see? You have to be willing to be vulnerable. To what? To the beauty of the sacred, the beauty of Christ, Sarah's beauty as a person, you see? You have to have a heart willing to be open to the compelling beauty of the other. Here in the case, it's Christ. If you're going to hedge your bets, you're not going to love Christ. If you're going to ask the question, what's in it for me? Nothing. You get nothing. If you ask the question, what's in it for him? For Christ, then you'll get Christ. I always think of that in marriage. If your question is this, and is you're courting somebody, what's in it for me? You're going to end up dying alone. You don't deserve her. You don't deserve him. You should be asking, if you truly have a heart open to love, what can I give her? How can I make her happy? See? That's the same dynamic here, you see? Okay? Uh, let me just read this. I just, that's the analogy with love, but it's exactly what's going on here. And what happens if your heart is frozen and you, or you don't have the courage to be vulnerable, then you will never see, let alone love the beloved. You'll never see Christ because you're afraid of Christ. You're afraid of seeing him. You're afraid of love because love is compelling. It holds, there are no holes barred when you love somebody, whether it is divine or, or not, then your heart is vulnerable because you're going to give your heart away. See, that's the truth here. I'll read it to you. You see? And what he, I think what Matthew is showing is that the people at the time, he's dealing with the defections. They didn't have the heart to love with abandon. They blocked it. See, they were blocking it. So watch what he says. This is why, the question is this, why do you talk in parables? See, this is really a, a confusion here, whatever's worth, because the parable's not meant to be confusing, it's meant to be clarifying. But what I was, the disciples approached Jesus and said, why do you speak to the crowd in parables? He said to them in reply, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To what anyone who has, more will be given, and we, he'll grow rich. And from anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. So you know that the faith is a function of the divine providence. It's a gift, but you've got to be open to the gift. See? This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. They see, they look, look, but do not see. Okay. Before you can love Sarah, you must first see her. See, not look at. See. Looking is objective. Seeing is intimate. See? It's the same with listening. Uh, and hearing. See? And they hear but do not listen or understand. They hear the words, but their heart is not open to, the, to listen. 
to allow the fullness of the of the of the word spoken to enter not only one's mind but one's heart to to truly listen you hear people complain and I talk to my spouse, all to my husband, my wife, but he doesn't listen. That's one of the worst condemnations I can think of. He doesn't listen. She doesn't listen. Talk about a loneliness, a radical loneliness, that when I speak, I am not heard. By whom? The one I love the most in the world. Yeah. But then Matthew quotes Isaiah. And here's what he says. You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Why? Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their ear, their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted and I heal them. They block it, you see, that's Isaiah. They say they're blocking it. But then he goes on, but blessed are your eyes because you see and your ears because they hear. Amen, amen I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but didn't see it and to hear what you hear but didn't hear it. He's saying to his apostles, your heart was open, you see me, you hear me, you listen to me. And therefore, I am in your life and you are in mine. See? Yeah. That's the truth. I, I, I think of marriage and love because I think that's exactly what he's describing. He, great, you see, how does he say it? That's a powerful line in Isaiah. He says, uh, they have closed their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears. See? They look but do not see. They hear, but do not listen or understand. That is so incredibly human. Isn't that true? It's usually out of, uh, well, I want to say the fear of seeing and hearing, because once you see and hear, then your life is radically transformed because you enter into the communion with the intimate. There's a song, Bob, I love this thing, by Barbara Streisand. Nah, she's my favorite woman singer, female singer. Sinatra's my favorite male singer. But she's, there's a song in which she says, he touched me and nothing is the same. The great line, he touched me. He touched me and nothing is the same. See? See? He, I, I see and nothing is the same. I hear and nothing is the same. See? I think of my own vocation when my niece Michelle asked asked me why I became a priest. She was just a little girl at the time. And I was just 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, 30 years ago anyway. And I said, I felt called. I heard in the voice of a counselor, you ought to be a priest. Why couldn't he keep his dog on mouth shut? I was chasing girls since I was in kindergarten, okay? Good, I kidding, I said I was in grade, yeah, in, in kindergarten. <laughs> Anyway, because I felt called in the voice of the counselor. I felt the call. And I, as much as I didn't want it, I heard it. And I couldn't say no to it. See, did I have lived faithfully up to what I hope I have as any, anyone who loves someone else? Hopefully you hope that you have been overall faithful, actively faithful. But I'm sure I have failed as much as I have done well, okay? But like in a marriage, there's no one event. It's a story of fidelity, active fidelity. That's what it is. And I hope I have too. I hope my heart was open to hear and to see. As you, especially who are married, were open to see your spouse and hear his voice or hers and join them in a communion of intimacy and love. Isn't that neat? I'm right what I'm saying about that to have a heart open to seeing and hearing that one can become intimate in the life of the other, who reaches to you, see, who is present to you for you to see and to hear.